Um, hi, everybody. Um, I co-chair the New York Lasers with Ellen K. Levy. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, started in, I think, about 2008, I think, with Ellen and Victoria, and then I came on, and for a while we were kind of doing um, different, trying out different formats. And now it exists in a, in a, um, um, in the, in the format uh, that was established in about 2009. Um, first of all, I'm uh, based in St. Louis, but I had always been going back and forth to New York a lot because I had a studio there. So Ellen and I were, wow, art and brain. Uh, so, um, so <laughs> sorry, easily distracted. So I'm in New York every six weeks. We hold the lasers approximately every six weeks. We do, um, we do send out um, invitations. We have our own kind of mailing list, so I email out the invitation. We also work with Daniela to and the uh, all of the um, Leonardo staff to make sure that the event gets posted on the newsletter and there's an opportunity for people to RSVP. Strangely, we get maybe only 10 RSVPs, but we get anywhere between 40 to 70 people showing up to these events. Um, we have um, probably more artists than scientists. We also have humanists. We have people who are based in technology. Many of them are coming through New York because they happen to be there. You know, we're, we're kind of opportunistic inviters. You know, they happen to be coming through because they have an exhibition or they're doing a curated project. And then I also work, uh, I had set up separate from the laser, I had set up an art science fellows group uh, on my campus in St. Louis, and um, a lot of those people then I have also invited out. And people are paying their own way. They'll say, well, you know, I like to go to New York, I like to go there for research, or my son is in university or something. So, so we do get people coming from a lot of different places who present. We typically have three to four presenters per event. And, um, um, Ellen and I kind of co-introduce the laser series. We talk about the Leonardo group. We talk about being former chairs a little bit. And then we say, you know, we've got these following people presenting. And then Ellen and I go back, back and forth. We introduce each one. We ask that the uh, presentations themselves um, stay at about 20 minutes each. Everybody always goes over. Um, and all of this is preceded with a lot of wine and cheese and food. And just like Jill, um, you know, I pay for my own airline ticket. I pay for my, you know, Ellen and I split the cost on the food. So the, the costs are high. We also used to take the guests out for dinner afterwards. And, and I just finally said, this is, you know, I can't, I can't be affording to be. It was cost, you know, like it, each time I was doing this, it was costing me $500 minimum out of pocket. So I finally said, okay, we all go for Chinese and everybody goes, pays their own way. So um, anyway, so at the end of the laser, everybody sits up at the front of uh, the studio. We are hosting this at Ellen's studio called Levy Arts. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute, but we put all the speakers up at the front of the studio and then we engage in conversation. And the reason that we very deliberately have foregone recording or streaming or anything else, we have found consistently that when we have tried that, the conversations have become more kind of stilted and stiff. And when we're not recording and you get artists and scientists in the room, it becomes a very safe kind of testing ground for, uh, for conversation. So this is the reason why we don't tape or record. We have tried that. We have never liked it. It's just been a real hassle. But again, primarily it's because we really open uh, up uh, conversations where people are not afraid to speak because they know they're not being recorded. So these uh, conversations get very lively. Um, so it does really become a testing ground for ideas. Um, themes tend to emerge. Sometimes if we can get uh, themes set up ahead of time, we will, but we don't, um, we don't rely on this. Themes always inevitably end up emerging. And because we get such really interesting people showing up to these, they never have a problem sort of um, asking questions of the panelists and uh, teasing out common themes themselves. So um, I don't know what else I can say. Uh, 
the studio, uh, you know, we we know that a lot of other laser events happen at the various institutions around New York City. But again, we have found that the studio setting is a very, um, it's just casual enough um, to, to incite um, really interesting, open, reason debate on, on some pretty wonderful issues. So I hope that, that I don't know if anybody's got questions. So yeah. I think it's interesting that you decided to ditch the video and recording component because I'm thinking about ditching it as well. Mm -hmm. For one, we don't do anything. Mm -hmm. you know, and, we're hoping you will. Yeah, and yeah. so like it's it's such a pain to get it to a point where yeah. it's good, right? Uh, yeah, that it just looks horrible, and I have like multiple cameras, and then you have to edit it down. Yeah. And you know, I would love to have something that I would could post that's engaging, but it seems like we're putting so many resources into the video, and mm -hmm. I do think at some points it makes it stiffer. Mm -hmm. Um. But I would like to, you know, as we go through, hear what other people are doing with it, because I know you want a visual record of these things mm -hmm. and be able to post them on like YouTube videos or something like that. But we've just found, found that we're horrible at it. Yeah. And um, we kind of have stopped putting mm -hmm. the resources into it. Even for this, the art science salons, which was a funded program that I ran for two years, which Victoria was an invited guest for, we ran it like a laser salon. I went out and bought wine and cheese, and we sat in a room with people from philosophy, uh, school of medicine, um, uh, uh, psychology, neuroscience, philosophy, art, design, and architecture. And the fact that we were all in a room without cameras and without being recorded, the conversations were really wonderful. So this is not a plea for everybody to, to stop yeah. recording. It's simply to say that the tenor of a conversation in a salon style without recording from our observation has been very, very different than otherwise. So, you know, I, I think for different lasers, different formats will work for us. We found that this kind of works the best. Yeah. Um, Please. So we initiated, Ellen and I, this mm -hmm. laser when I was visiting Professor Parsons. Mm -hmm. And absolutely on the table was to do it at Parsons, mm -hmm. but we actually chose to do it in her studio mm -hmm. to be outside of the academic mode. And I think in that kind of environment or in a smaller kind of mm -hmm. laid back environment, you don't want cameras. Yeah. Yeah. It instantly freezes you. Mm -hmm. But when you have an event like what you were describing mm -hmm. where it's That's more big. formal, yeah. then it's a matter of what we found through practice is to keep the shorter, tighter, mm -hmm. and to have everything on PowerPoint ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then it just, it's it's kind of edited in camera. Mm -hmm. But the moment you have 20, 30 minute talks and, yeah. you know, introductions, <laughs> and in between you're stuck with, you know, having to make all these comments. So mm -hmm. what we do is we, we have these very, as you will see tonight, yeah. <laughs> there they're very short talks, then afterwards there's no cameras. Mm. Okay. And so. people can say whatever they want, mm -hmm. right? And and they will. But that gives a kind of a, a spectrum of what's so possible. So do you focus on the, like in the <laughs> video, the presentation or the person, or are you editing back and forth? Because that's one of the things for we us. Have, we can switch. So we okay. have, since we have the PowerPoint, mm -hmm. we can switch. Uh, sometimes for some extraordinary events, we actually go back and edit. But yeah. we try to do in-camera editing, which okay. helps when you have a structure that already is edited, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So it's really, I mean, the longer talks do not lend well to that mm -hmm. because some people are excellent speakers, some people are not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you do five minutes, you can't go wrong <laughs> because even <laughs> It's over soon. Right, exactly. Even, I mean, even if somebody's awkward with it, it doesn't bother you. But after a certain amount of time, you, you want to switch or link to something else. Okay. And we actually found the longer we we actually found the longer talks were what the speakers wanted. Yeah, in so time. It's, a, it's really about the context. They really wanted it. If it was a scientist presenting research, they didn't want to do a Petra Kucha style talk. They really wanted to get into their research. Right. And the artists, the same thing. They wanted to contextualize the work. So it's not an either or. It just depends on, you know, really what the constituency that you're working with wants to do. But Jill had a question. Yes. No, it's just a um, comment. Can you turn down? To, sorry. Oh, wait, wait. Wait a sec. Turn up there. Turn down soon. Yes, so we've actually found that scientists won't come to our talks and won't talk 
if they're being recorded. We want scientists as, to give scientists a safe place to talk. And this means that the controversies that they deal with within their own research can actually be shared with the public and also with other artists. And I think with artists, I think it's very important to have this sort of safe place. But I think this is one kind of laser and maybe there's, it doesn't all have to be the same, of course, but I do think there's uh, room for this very intimate and formal, informal kind of spaces compared to the much more formal uh, presentation spaces. And I, I think it really makes a difference that the scientists don't feel, they don't want to see themselves um, on YouTube <laughs> talking about it, the subjects they're talking about. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious, um, you know, how many of you stick to the Pecha Kucha format? Uh, because when we, Steve and I signed up for this, it, we felt we were under the impression it was kind of a requirement. Um, but I'm wondering like, how many of you have kind of broken from that and, you know, it seems like the majority of you are going for much longer presentations, correct? Well, well, we're not sticking to the format, actually. I think the thing is that it depends on the place, on the situation, on the intimacy compared to the public forum. I'm not too sure whether the format should be a real rule and regulation. Um, I'm, 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 can you hear me? Can, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, I'll, I'll speak here uh, as one of the committee for the lasers, and having gone to the last, I guess, two summit meetings for lasers, at the ones that um, uh, in, in California, um, up north. And we talked a lot about format. And of course, the original laser format was four speakers, no theme. Um, we decided there's room for flexibility there. Some people like themes, some people don't. Uh, we did talk about uh, length a little bit. Um, and no, the original idea was not Pecha Kucha. The original idea was four speakers, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, the way Piero started the program, he always had a break in the middle where anybody could, from the community could speak. Some do that, some don't. We did that. Um, yeah, I'm not doing that in Santa Cruz. We do a pre a, a pre reception there and a long after talk, but essentially no. Um, th there is flexibility. I think the main thing that we came down to, and Tammy, correct me uh, if if you remember it differently, is that it does need to be a mix of art and sciences, um, and tread carefully with themes. Themes are okay, but but the, part of the real notion here was that if you have too much of a theme you'll get the people who go to that theme. And the laser, the core laser concept is to try to aggregate audiences that will not otherwise be in the same room together. And um, you can do a theme that pulls the arts and the sciences in and you, you'll still get that same, that same synergy and that same kind of unusual interaction. But if it gets, the, the feeling was that if it gets too tight, then it you lapse into a very, a much more traditional mm -hmm. academic um, panel discussion Right. mode and, and the notion of laser was to try to short circuit that yeah. and we very deliberately try i mean we it, it's not deliberate if themes happen to be um connecting the speakers in the beginning we don't mind noting that mm -hmm. but the point of our lasers is that they have they're generative and they there's emergent properties so we don't know where the conversations are going to go the questions happen at the end we try to leave at least 45 minutes for q a and really rich conversation which is a good chunk of time and it is a very dialogic process i mean mm -hmm. we really focus on that in terms of our format right now and if we were prescribing three themes we would be choreographing those conversations right now they're not choreographed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so this is an important point you disagree yeah yeah uh, so yeah um i just want to clarify though i don't know where you got the idea that they were supposed to be um you know, these five minute talks, was that communicated to you? I mean, for today, for tonight, it was intended to be that just because there's a lot of people and right. we assume right. people wanted to speak, but, but, but people are free to run them how they want, first of all, in terms of how, what length speak talks they want to have. 
Um, and also, I just want to say that people are free to have themes if they want, as long as they're art sci themes. Yep. I think it's absolutely fine. It doesn't have to be non thematic. It's just that was the tradition of how it started mm -hmm. because Piero Scarruffi started it that way. Right. So they sort of proliferated in that way, but they've changed over time because there's a lot of different lasers now. And we want people to feel ownership of their lasers and do what they want to do as long as it's within the art sci realm. So one, one thing that I forgot to bring up is uh, we mimicked the National Academy of Science in some way at the beginning is we used to do a community share where the audience members had microphones where they could come up and talk about who they were mm -hmm. and kind of give a brief introduction about the things that they're interested in. We found for the first three that worked really well, then after that it started getting in the way, then people were more advertising. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they go on and yeah, on and yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, we kind of dropped that one. But I think if you have a really diverse group that's coming in, it's not the same group of people coming in and out every time. It seems like that would be something that could help. But for us, it kind of devolved into something else. Yeah. And for us, I mean, we get we do have one kind of core of people that tend to come come to all of them, and there's at least at least one third, I'll ask who's who's at a laser for the first time tonight, mm -hmm. and at least a third of the audience will put their mm -hmm. hands up. So, um, so we do get a lot of pe different people cycling through. Yeah, but but yeah, I think for us the the because um, we get asked all the time, and I know that it that the conversation about it being at Parsons, and then I I get other people attending saying, well, why don't you? Why don't you do it at Central Booking next time? Or why don't you, you know, there's a gallery that does art size shows. Why don't you do your laser here? And maybe you do one event that's a Thursday night or something. But we we have just found it to, we just have tried different themes and we've tried different, considering different locations. And it just seems to to always come back to the format that we have now. So uh, Jill has a question. Okay. No, it's just, well, we actually almost only work with themes. Um, and that's the reason is because the themes are, uh, there's certain, at this point, I think, our community needs to think about ways in which certain uh, issues kind of come together. And so I have this task, which I think is an interesting one, of trying to find a scientist that matches with the artist. And therefore, um, I don't think, I do do think that themes are really important, but I, I think this is for us one thing that does really work well. Um, people come because of the controversy around a particular theme. So, for example, um, we might have biohacking or echo hacking might might be the theme. And then we would have like a, say a certain an artist who fits that theme, and maybe a scientist, and maybe a hacker. You know, and they they would actually fit that together. It's, it works best for us to have themes. Um, but then my role in that is only to raise a maybe six or seven questions to help the audience think along with those themes. But we work in themes. <laughs>